In this video, we want to find the magnetic field due to an uh, infinite sheet of current. And so here's a uh, sheet of current I have here, and the these little circles with dots is telling us the current is coming out of the uh, screen, and it's infinite in extent uh, to the side, as well as we're going to assume the currents themselves are infinite in, in extent in and out of the screen. And so what is the magnetic field at some uh, height, say, above this sheet of current? Okay, well first let's just stick with our picture and try to understand uh, what's going on. First I'll get a coordinate system. Let's call uh, this the positive x, this the positive y, and we'll have positive z out of the screen. So the current is in the positive z direction. Okay, that's, well, current is in positive z. Okay, and we want to know the, the magnetic field at some height y uh, above the, the sheet. Okay, so so what is going to contribute to to this current? So if I look at the the current that's immediately below the point that I'm looking at and use the right hand rule for the direction of the magnetic field I point my fingers in the direction of the current which is out of the screen and then curl my fingers to the point that I'm looking at which is right above me and if you do that with your right hand you'll find it, it contributes some uh, magnetic field in the negative x direction. That's for this one. And so let's let's look for another one. If we have, say, a uh, uh, this one right here is going to contribute sort of a magnetic field in that direction. And if I go to the other side of it and use the right hand rule it's going to contribute a magnetic field in that direction. Okay, and and so if I keep doing this, if I look, that's magnetic field in that direction. I go to the other side, it gives you a magnetic field in that direction. In fact, if I go sort of infinitely far away here, over to <laughs> to my negative infinity, it's essentially g limiting to a magnetic field straight up, and and uh. uh infinitely on the positive x axis I've got magnetic field straight down and, and so all of these bits of current are contributing to magnetic fields that point in various degree to, degrees to the negative x axis and also for every current that contributes a vector below the uh, horizontal there's another one above the horizontal and so we can argue that all of the y components of the contributing magnetic fields uh, uh, subtract out and we're only left with a magnetic field pointing in the negative x direction and, and this is the sort of reasoning by symmetry that you want to do a lot of in solving physics problems to be able to simplify what you have to work with and, and a lot of that just comes from drawing lots of pictures and and spending some time with them. Okay, what about in the z direction? We say the same thing. If if I'm looking, let's just let's look in the the positive z. This is where my current is going and and I'm looking at some height above it. So a a current element say here is uh contributing a a component of of the magnetic field uh, using the right hand rule my uh, i is in this direction and then um, right hand rule to the to the point where I'm looking and I still have a uh, um, field contributing a field which is out of the page in this diagram which is also in the negative x-axis. So going along the z-axis you get just contributions along the negative x just like you do here and then as you go off axis again any contributions, every contribution you have to positive y uh, is countered by a contribution to the negative y from the other side of the the point that you're looking at. Okay, so we have 
we now realize that above this sheet the magnetic field is pointing in the negative x direction. What about below this the sheet of current? Well we have using the right hand rule again now we see that there's a magnetic field pointing along the positive x-axis and all the y contributions um, uh, sub subtract out because of the symmetry just like and above. Okay, so we've learned something. We know that at some fixed height h there's going to be a magnetic field above to the negative x-axis below to the positive x-axis. And so now we want to uh, be able to, to calculate this thing. Since this has a large degree of symmetry, we're thinking of using uh, Ampere's law, and we think we know uh, how to set that up. Because if we, well, let's get Ampere's law out here. So for some loop, the integral, the line integral of the magnetic field around that loop is equal to uh, mu naught times the current enclosed in that loop. Now to do this thing, we'd like to establish a path that is either parallel or perpendicular to the magnetic field at every point. So if the magnetic field is always in that direction above the plane and always in this direction below the plane, a logical Amperian loop would go parallel to the magnetic field at a height h and then go perpendicular to the field as it crossed. So let's call this have some side length a and this is some height below above the, the plane and some height below the plane. Now I've approximated my plane as simply a line. Okay, so we have to know something about the, the current. Um, you, we, might, we might know that the current is given by some uh, current density, say with constant current density J naught. In this case, this would be a, a current per unit length because we're essentially assuming a one-dimensional um, uh, well, it, I mean, it's two-dimensional, <laughs> but in the direction of propagation, it's one-dimensional. There is no height to the direction of propagation. Cur you know, here you have a wire. The current is the density is usually defined current per meter squared, the cross-sectional area. Since we don't have any effective height, we just have length. Or we can say we have some current uh, per um, uh, meter. So i per meter, we can call it amps per meter, however you'd like. Okay, so we, maybe some current density. A another way to think about this is you can think about this as sort of n or a whole bunch of really small wires that are very close together that um, uh, that are then carrying the current in one dimension, say all right next to each other then um, this would, there would be some sort of number of wires per unit length, say n per a, that you would, uh, that would model sort of the density of your wires. And if you have sort of the number of wires per unit length a, then you would make sort of a here the length of the, the width of your Amperian loop. Okay, so either a current density or sort of a wires per unit length, um, it is carrying the current. So now let's go ahead and compute the line integral for the Amperian loop that we have. All right. So the, the my first, we're going to go along the top here. So as I uh, integrate along the top, and so the um, you have to imagine actually taking little steps of dl in this direction. And so if you can imagine taking little steps of dl in this direction, we can see that the dl is in fact parallel to the magnetic field all the way along the uh, upper branch of this loop. So if they're parallel, then the dot product is just the uh, product of the magnitudes. And so you get b dl. And so then if we integrate B dl, 
b has to be constant, so it comes out of the integral. And does that does that make sense? Did we talk about we talked about the direction of b, and we know it has to be constant as well because it is uh, uh, uniform across the the entire way. I mean, this this point is no different than this point, which is no different than this point if it's infinite extent along the x-axis. And so uh, the the magnitude of the field also has to be the same. And so then this becomes the length of that branch, which is b times a. All right. Now if we go to the bottom, remember I, I well I'm sort of skipping, but we were going all the way around the loop in the same orientation. So we're going like this. So if we look at the bottom, we notice that our DL steps are going off to the right, which is also the same direction as the magnetic field, which was in the positive x-axis. Therefore, DL, our, our small vector steps, are parallel to the magnetic field at the bottom as well. And so B dot the DL is just equal to the product, and then the same thing occurs again and the, we get a contribution to the integral of the magnetic field times the length A. So now, if we go to the sides, we see immediately for both of them that the, the steps are perpendicular to the magnetic field, and so the dot product is equal to zero. So the only contributions are to the side, which both have uh, B times A, and so the total uh, integral, line integral of the magnetic field ar around our Amperian loop is twice the magnetic field times this length A of our loop. All right, I've cleared some space here. This uh, was the total line integral, and so we know that this 2 times B times A is equal to mu naught times the current enclosed. So what is the current enclosed in the loop? Well, it's all of the it's all of the current in this part of the sheet. And so if I think about it in terms of density, that's equal to the uh, density times the length, which is A. And so then I can calculate the magnetic field, then because the A's cancel, and I just get mu naught times the current density divided by 2. All right. If I think about it in terms of sort of all these, these little wires, and so our current density is going to be the sort of number of wires uh, per unit length, times the current through each wire, and so in this case then my magnetic field would be mu naught, the number of wires, times the current through each wire, divided by 2 times their unit length A. And so this is the magnitude of the magnetic field, and so then if we want the uh, vector, of course we all, it, it depends on um, where it is above the sheet, it's going to be in the negative x direction, and below it's in the positive x direction. And so, what what do we think about this if we were to to analyze it? Um, so, it's proportional to the the current density, which makes sense. More current, the larger the field, and uh, nothing else really. It's not, in fact, dependent on the height above the sheet, which means it's constant for all distances. Uh, does that make sense? I mean, if you move infinitely far away, it, it you still have a constant density. Shouldn't it decay to zero as you go far away? And, and the solution is, we saw this before with the infinite plane of charge giving a field that's constant. And and right, it should go to zero as you go far away. But remember, this <laughs> this this sheet is infinite. It, it, it extends over the entirety of the universe, and and so with such enormous amounts of current, that's why it can create a constant magnetic field that extends off to infinity. So, 
of course that's unrealistic in real life what this is what this is saying we would use it in the same regime we use the infinite plane of charge if you have a flat sheet of current and if you're looking at distances h say that is much less than the dimensions of your sheet of current which may be l say you're very close to the surface then you could use this approximation of infinite sheet of current and use this simple relationship and so that's the type of systems that that you would use this where you'd be able to use this model of your infinite sheet of current